All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get underway. So please find your tables, have a seat, and uh, let's begin this special evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2016 Block H Awards Dinner. I'm Mike Hanna, Hobart Director of Athletics, and once again, I'm honored to be your Master of Ceremonies for this evening's event. When Hobart College holds its Athletics Hall of Fame celebration, it's to honor the past. Tonight, the Block H Dinner is to pay tribute to the present, to the now, to the statesman of the 2015-16 academic year. Tonight, we pay tribute to over 300 student athletes, from the scout team quarterback to the All-American rower, from Rookies of the Year to the recipient of the initial Trevor Moore Sailing Award. We honor young men who were lost in their first year and now are about to graduate as Dean's List students. We salute you student athletes who didn't see much playing time yet. We salute you with the same admiration as we pay to the recipients of the MVP awards. Each of you help them to earn those accolades. Tonight we also show our respect to Hobart's coaches. Their teaching, leadership, and discipline are at the core of the growth of you student athletes and the accomplishments of our 11 varsity teams. And tonight, we also show our gratitude to our athletic support staff. They are the first to arrive, and they are the last to leave, and their dedication, we all know, is truly remarkable. Finally, but foremost, tonight, we pay homage to our seniors. And I thank all of you for being here tonight to offer a well-deserved tribute to the great class of 2016. To begin this celebration, it's appropriate that we do so with a sense of gratitude and I invite our teammate and friend, the chaplain of our colleges, the Reverend Morris Charles, to lead us in the opening prayer at his first of many Block H dinners. Reverend Charles. When King David of old considered the mystery of being human, he picked up his lyre and sang the words, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's pause for a moment of gratitude. <clears throat> now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we give thanks for the synergy of bodies and minds fearfully and wonderfully made. We give thanks for perseverance, and for growth from strength to strength, for challenges that stretch us beyond our wildest imaginations, for disappointments that motivate us to do better still. We are grateful for coaches, teachers, family, and friends who support and uphold these statesmen. May they be blessed in all they undertake. Now that we gather at this meal that nourishes and sustains us, we give thanks for these gifts and for this circle of brotherhood. May it grow stronger and wider with each passing day and so provide nourishment for the world. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Charles. For those of you who would like a vegetarian or gluten-free dinner, please ask your server. And as all of you know, tonight finds us in the home stretch of the academic year. It's a busy time for everyone, particularly our students. So we move through our program with a sense of purpose and a sense of dignity. Uh, I certainly don't like interrupting the camaraderie of this evening and the conversation, but I do ask that you offer your attention to the award presenters and the recipients while enjoying your meal. And please silence your cell phones. Thank you very much. On behalf of this year's 
11 athletic teams, I offer a special welcome to the president of the colleges, Mark Guerin, SAA president Bud Ames and his wife Diane, Dean of Hobart College, Oregon Bear, Vice President of Student Affairs, Rob Flowers, and our Alumni Director, Jared Whedon, and from our Board of Trustees, Maureen Zupan. An especially warm welcome to Mr. John Moore. Later this evening, head sailing coach, Scotty Clay, will present the Most Valuable Sailor Award in honor of John's son, Trevor, class of 2007. Joining the sailing team and Mr. Moore tonight is Trevor's college teammate and roommate, Brian Clancy. Brian is the head sailing coach at Cornell University. John and Brian, we are honored to have you both with us this evening, and let's give them a warm Hobart welcome. <laughs> Mr. Moore and Brian Clancy, good to have you here. Many of you here tonight are Statesman Athletic Association members, and be assured that your generous investment plays a key role in the growth of our student athletes as citizens, leaders, and teammates. We thank you one and all. Along with President Ames, with us tonight are Vice President of the SAA, John Fogel, and past President Dave Call. Also from our Board of Directors, our Student Directors, Seniors Connor Hardigan, August Weary, Sophomore Bennett Moore, and Junior Joe Busatil, and Joe's abroad studying this semester. This semester. So, uh, gentlemen from the SAA board, if you'd please stand, we'd like to recognize you as well. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Related to the SAA, we are pleased to have with us tonight a Hobart alum from AdPro Sports, Michael Faraka, class of 2010. AdPro Sports in Buffalo, New York is our newest title corporate partner, and we are grateful for their generous sponsorship of the Block H dinner. Mike, back in your day of attending this dinner, I didn't, I'm pretty sure you never thought you'd be picking up the tab, but let's thank Mike for dinner tonight. Very nice of you. Later this evening, Bud and Diane Ames will receive the Doreen Maxwell Memorial Citizenship Award. And I would like to offer a special statesman welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Ames' guest. Joining Bud and Diane tonight are Jack and Marilyn McDonald. Uh, Jack and Bud were college teammates. Jack's a retired Hobart lacrosse coach. If you are ever on Jeopardy and the blue square on the board flashes Eisenhower College lacrosse coach, the correct answer is, who is Jack McDonald? So Jack and Marilyn, good to have you here. Another of Bud's teammates and a former SAA board member is Terry Cullen and his wife, Suzanne. Terry was a standout statesman football and lacrosse player. And as a young underclassman, he was a person I've held in high, high regard for years and years. Later this evening, a football team member will receive the Cullen Memorial Award in honor of Terry's father, Bob. Hobart class in 1937. So, Mr. and Mrs. Cullen, thank you for making the trip from Ithaca. Also with the Ames tonight are Jack and Susan Woodward, no doubt the highest ranking member here in, in uh, tonight's gathering, retired Air Force General Jack Woodward and Susan are actively involved in the well-being of the St. Lawrence River in the Antique Boat Museum, as our Bud and Diane Ames. So, Jack and Susan, thank you for coming down from the river tonight. And also joining this distinguished group, a states, great statesman in her own right, Hobart's number one fan, Mary Ann Hanna. So, that's a great table right there. Thank you. At this time, I would ask seniors Adam Hardy and Connor Hardigan to come to the stage to my right, along with coordinator of sports medicine, Nick Cook. While they're coming forward, I draw your attention to pages 11 and 12 in your dinner program, where you will find listed the Hobart athletes who have earned conference, regional, national, and Hobart academic honors. This is really an impressive list of scholarship. And on page two, we list the team captains, members of our student athlete advisory council, Please give these scholar athletes and team leaders a well-deserved round of applause. And we'll, before you do that, I want to also thank the Hobart student athletes who this year served the colleges 
as members of the HWS Wellness Corps, so a great group of campus leaders. Thank you, one and all. Nick Cook will now present the Abraham Memorial Sports Medicine Award and the Abraham Prize. Both of these honor the memory of our longtime, student, or our longtime head athletic trainer, Joe Abraham. Nick Cook. Thank you. First, I want to uh, I want to extend a thank you to my staff um, working in the athletic training room. We uh, we like to keep things as lighthearted as we can. It's not a place that people want to be, and they make it a better place to come in every day for the student athletes and for myself. So I just want to thank you for making things a little bit easier and a little bit better, lighter place for us all to be. As I just alluded to, the athletic training room is not a place any athlete wants to find themselves spending the bulk of their time. I've seen a few athletes, I've seen few athletes with the commitment to the hours of rehab, pushing himself to regain the strength he once had, only to re-injure himself a year later. After the first time through rehab, I didn't think anyone could work harder. The second time he did, battling back from two ACL reconstructions and a host of other wear and tear injuries throughout the seasons. To see great success as a captain and starting running back his senior season is truly a testament to his work ethic. This year's award winner, Connor Hardigan, will always go down as one of the hardest working training room guys I've ever seen. The Abraham Prize is awarded to a student for outstanding service to athletics. This year's recipient has gone from student athlete working through injury to student aide with sports medicine to manager for the lacrosse team to student, assess, student assistant with the lacrosse coaching staff. It may have taken a little extra time, but I've had the great fortune of watching Adam Hardy develop into a true go-to guy in Hobart Athletics, and it gives me great pride to present him with the Abraham Prize. Thank you, Nick. Congratulations, Connor and Adam. On behalf of our coaches and student athletes, I want to recognize an elite group of people who keep Hobart Athletics running day in and day out, and whose contributions are central to the achievements of our teams. Please hold your applause until I've introduced this exceptional statesman support staff. And uh, as I introduce you, if you all would stand and remain standing. Equipment coordinators Kevin McDonald and happy birthday to Bob Toner. So Kevin and Bob. Compliance Coordinator Brian Miller, our Sports Medicine staff Nick Cook, Katie Ketchum, Sarah Seaworth, and Jackie Stucker, Head Strength Coach Matt Dorn and Assistant Jake Alvarez, our Secretaries Patty Calla, Becky Steedle, and Christine Finnerty, Athletics Communication staff Ken DeBolt, Paige Mullen, Mackenzie Larson, and the staff at the Sport and Rec Center, Russ Hess, Rob Fields, and as always, tip of the hat to Deb Stewart and the William Smith staff. And we certainly couldn't function without the teamwork of our buildings and grounds people, food services, and campus safety. So let's give all those support people a well-deserved round of applause. move into the uh, core of tonight's program, the team awards, and parents, if you would like to come forward on the main floor to take a photo, please feel free to do so. Just a couple notes, uh, the endowed awards have permanent plaques which hang in the stairwell, uh, the Statesman Awards Gallery. It's a great walk in history if you want to view that after the dinner. In your dinner program at the each at the end of each award description, in italic print, is the name of last year's recipient. And our order this year will be starting with the spring sports, we'll move to the fall, and wrap it up with the winter sports. The spring sports 
If you're following, following in your scorebook, uh, begin on page six in your dinner program. As head golf coach Ken Doherty comes forward, I invite these members of the Hobart golf team to join me on the stage to my right. Alex Grant, Harry Hagen, Sam Mosey Silverman, and Griffin Thrush. Coach Doherty. Good evening, everyone. Um, I think the top award we won this year as a golf team was the 2015 GCAA Team Academic Award last August. Hobart Golf was one of 34 Division III teams to earn this award. To qualify for the award, we had to have a team GPA of 3.0 for every player on our roster during the season. Less than 12% of the 291 NCAA Division III men's golf teams nationwide received this honor. I would also like to congratulate Jay Paleo on being inducted into Phi Beta Kappa recently. Jay also made every Liberty League all-academic team every year he was eligible. Jay has carried a 4.0 GPA in his four years at Hobart and is waiting to hear back from medical schools. As always, thanks to the SAA and especially our team liaison, Tom O'Connor, for all of their support again this season. Thank you, Mike Hanna, for your support and our faculty advisor fellow, Chip Caprero. I would also like to congratulate and wish best to all of this year's graduating seniors, and to, especially to my three seniors, Jay Paleo, Josh Melnick, and Harry Hagan. Um, it's thank you to all the athletes that I've had the pleasure of working with as a game day manager. All of you make my, game, uh, make my job very easy. And thank you to the parents. And now on to my awards. Uh, my Rookie of the Year, Griffin Thrush. Griffin played five tournaments this year with one, 20, one top 25 finish. And I think he's learned some valuable lessons this season that will help him to improve the next season. Griffin. My next award is the O'Connor Golf Award. This is our most improved player. This year the award goes to Sam Mosey Silverman. Sam continued to improve this year and shot a 77 in the Fall Liberty League Tournament. Sam was seven shots back after the Fall Tournament with a chance of moving up to second team all Liberty League at our championship this past weekend. A back injury forced Sam to retire after five holes. I expect a lot more from Sam next season. The A.H. Beretta Memorial Award. This year's winner is Harry Hagen. Harry shot a 76 at Elmira, College, Elmira College's Fall Invitation, coming in third place out of 50 players. Harry also had the lowest score in my five years of coaching with a 72 in last year's ECAC Mid-Atlantic Championship. Harry also has six of our top 20 scores this season. Congratulations, Harry. My final award is the Van Etten Memorial Award. This is our Most Valuable Player Award. This year, the award goes to Alex Grant. Alex is not here tonight because he is abroad in, Lon abroad in London for this semester. In the six tournaments Alex played this year, he had one top five finish and three top 10 finishes. His best finish was a second place tie out of 59 players in Oswego. He also led the team with a scoring average of 79. In the nine rounds Alex played this year, he had eight of our top 20 rounds. And to make all of us golfers a little bit jealous, he's going to be playing at St. Andrews in two weeks. So something every one of us golfers dream about. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Congratulations, gentlemen. As Greg Raymond, our head coach of lacrosse, makes his way forward, I would ask these lacrosse team members to join me to my right, Cooper Stefaniak, Gavin Llewellyn, 
Teddy Cisco Tolomeo, John Sawyer, Peter Ashmore, Andrew Spallanzani, Brian Cochran, Frank Brown, and Christopher Aslanian. Coach Raymond. Good evening. First, I'd like to acknowledge my, my staff, my offensive coordinator, Pete Poyan, my defensive coordinator, Jeremy Hirsch, our volunteer assistant who's not in attendance, Craig Whipple, and our coordinator of lacrosse operations, Terry Muffley. They do a wonderful job. I believe I have the best staff in the country. Uh, thank you to our SAA, uh, all those in attendance, and our reps, Joe Corcoran and Rich Moses, we feel very well taken care of on an everyday basis and are overly thankful for everything that you do. Uh, a special acknowledgement of uh, Dr. Bob Ford. Just wanted to say, hang tough. I believe you're in attendance tonight. We're thinking about you every day. And um, you continue to be the toughest guy that I know. And uh, John Collins, right to my left here, thank you for all your support. And we all love spending time with you. Our faculty fellow, Richard Salter, his guidance is outstanding, and uh, we appreciate everything he does for us as well. This year we've had a very hot and cold season, uh, currently in the midst of battling out of one of those cold spots. We're 7-6, and 3-2 and two in our conference, uh, faced every type of adversity, and are anxious to fight through a little bit more and play our best lacrosse when our goals are on the line. Our last regular season game is this Saturday. Following uh, the following week, we face off in our Northeast Conference Tournament for a shot at our conference title and a spot in the NCAA Tournament. So, our first award, the Rookie Award for Lacrosse. This left-handed attackman is our second leading scorer, currently carrying 19 goals and six assists. He has two exceptional performances with a uh, five-point performance against Canisius College and a seven-point showing versus our Northeast Conference rival, Robert Morris University. He's had two game-winning goals, one in double overtime against Canisius, one in triple overtime against Wagner. Has grown into a focal point for most opposing defenses and is a staple in our offense's continued growth. Our Rookie of the Year goes to Christopher Eslanian. <laughs> the Lieutenant John Vandenberg Memorial Award. We first I'd like to thank the SAA for this donation and it's presented annually to the players showing the most improvement. <clears throat> Last year, as a first year faceoff specialist, this young man had a season average of 38%. Thus far this season, he's jumped nearly 20% and is providing our team 57% of the possession battles he fights every single game. He continues to improve his conditioning, his athleticism, and is growing into the dynamic midfielder for us. This year's recipient of Lieutenant John Vandenberg Memorial Award is Andrew Spallanzani. The CRAG Outstanding Defensive Player Award. We have dual recipients this season. This, these two both serve a very specific role on our team and need to be recognized for their everyday improvement, and most importantly, their constant effort, energy, and commitment. We continue to tell our men that we believe at this level, collegiate athletics, you don't deserve anything, you deserve only what you earn. And the following info is only meant to help everybody understand just how dynamic these two individuals are for the success of our team. Neither are starters or play a significant role on game day. In fact, total combined between the two of them have played in four different contests this season. Regardless, you will rarely see either of these two not first in a sprint or executing a strength and conditioning session to the best of their ability. And I'm not sure we have two more competitive young men on our team. Every drill, every practice, every day, 
they are completely invested. Each is very talented in their own right, and I think on many other rosters, their role may be different. And each week we ask them to play another team's defense. They do so willingly, and they do so excellently. And we also ask them to know our team strategy, a selfless role. These two are 100% deserving of our Outstanding Defensive Player Awards because they have 100% earned it. The first, sophomore Jake Sawyer. The second, junior Peter Ashmore. The Van Arsdale Award presented annually to the member of our team whose scholarship, leadership, and determination have proven to be superior. This recipient is a beacon of hard work. He practices and plays with a constant motivation, one that's very difficult to teach. His approach to our goals is a shining example of how we'd like to see each player on this team consistently behave. He sees every day as a new opportunity, and is a staple on our defensive end and have been for the last three seasons. He is one of our best. However, this past year we've been most proud of his continued growth and are anxious to see his ability in the playoffs this coming week. This year's recipient of the Van Arsdale Award, Theodore Cisco Talameo. The William H. Dobbin Memorial Award. This award is presented annually to the player who, through his contributions to the team and achievements as an offensive player, best reflects the skills of Hobart Hall of Famer Bill Dobbin and the impact this great attackman not only had at this college, but on the sport of lacrosse. This recipient has battled back from two season-ending injuries to become the focus for all opposing defenses. These past two off-seasons, off excuse me, he has worked tirelessly to become a better athlete, and it has paid off significantly every day he plays. A season ago, you find him mostly as an off-ball finishing threat. Since then, he's grown into our most dynamic scorer with 28 goals and eight assists. A truly talented offensive player, the recipient of the William H. Dobbin Memorial Award, Frank Brown. The Ken W. Marbury Award. To say that I'm proud of this young man is a, is a drastic understatement. This award is presented annually to a member of our lacrosse team who, through dedication and hard work, best exemplifies the characteristics of Kent Marbury. This young man has proven time and time again his overwhelming dedication to this program. A year ago, he was, due to roster size and locker room space, cut from our roster. And every single day from that decision, walked his stuff to and from practice, all his equipment, his helmet, his clothes, did his laundry to prove his loyalty to this team. He earned his way back into the locker room and has then and now and always will bleed statesman orange, statesman orange, excuse me. He is dedicated, he is trustworthy, hardworking, and as committed to this team as anyone I've ever coached or ever will. We couldn't have a more valuable asset to what we do. And very candidly, I'm not sure I've ever been more wrong about an evaluation of what could help a team and what could hinder its progress. This young man only helps us in every single way, and we're going to miss him more than he knows. This year's Ken Marbury Award winner, Senior Ryan Cochran. Our final award, the Crook Family Award, presented annually to our most valuable player. <clears throat> we have two recipients this year. The first is on our first midfield, our extra man offense, plays defensive midfield. He's played attack this season. He's a vocal leader and has grown into a dynamic midfielder and a terror on most opposing defenses. He's a consistent presence on the field but represents 
basically all we want in our athletes off the field as well. Senior Gavin Llewellyn. Our second recipient, I could probably talk about for an hour up here, but the, uh, the highest compliment I think that I can give him is he represents the commitment and the dedication that we want in every member of our team. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of all he's done for us throughout his career here. Senior Cooper Savaniak. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Greg. Congratulations, gentlemen. As uh, head coach of rowing, Paul Bugenhagen is making his way forward. Uh, let's take a moment to uh, congratulate the 2016 Hobart rowing team on winning the Liberty League Championship, the 11th consecutive league championship for Hobart rowing. And would these members of the team please join me and Coach Buchenhagen, Brent Lahan, Samuel Ash, Davis Muller, and Stephen Bunce. Thank you. Diane, this is the jacket, right? <laughs> That's the jacket. I, uh, I kept trying to get into the Druids. <laughs> But so you made one yeah. up. Just made one. Sam Ash kept telling me I didn't make the cut. <laughs> or Sam Menchel kept telling me I didn't make the cut. So I made my own. So these jackets are what you wear when you go to the Henley Royal Regatta, which is uh, the oldest event in our sport. And it's hosted and um, it's done um, with the, the blessing of the royal family. And so when you compete, either as competitors or as coaches, when you're not in your racing gear as gentlemen, you must always be in a blazer. Over time, apparently you must always be in a blazer with incredibly poor taste. So, we made these. All right, on to the awards. Um, our season is well underway, and we are working very hard to put all of our assets and abilities into place as the final selection of our crews come to a close. As, we, as you know, we've just secured our 11th straight Liberty League title, and now we're moving into our championship season after this weekend's racing. Our signature races are still in front of us, and all of us are very excited for the championships in May and June that define so much of our season. I'd like to take a moment to thank our program's founder, Ford Weisskettle, also in one of these dapper purple blazers. Many thanks to Coach Hanna, the senior staff, and our faculty fellow, Dr. Matt Crow, for your constant support and guidance. Finally, I'd like to thank my assistant, Skip Kilt, for the quality job that he has done in year one. We have four special award winners tonight from rowing, and we'll start tonight with our Rookie of the Year Award. Uh, as a sport, we pride ourselves on the one-to-one -one relationship between hard work in preparation and excellence in performance. No first-year rower has done more to showcase this truism than Stephen Bunce. Steve has been exemplary in his commitment to training and especially impressive in his conduct and character as a teammate and friend. The results of his consistency have resulted in personal records and training, and he is one of two freshmen today to earn a varsity letter in rowing. Congratulations, Stephen Bunce. Oh, wrong way. Our Kent Smack 1997 award is an award given annually to the oarsman demonstrating the most improvement during the season or during his career. Sophomore rower Sam Ash is this year's Kent Smack award winner. Sam has had a transformational season. Sam is the epitome of the quiet, steadfast teammate. And he is dispendable as the sun is rising. As a first year rower, he impressed off the water and grew on the water. This year, he took advantage of his solid foundation and steady approach to truly create momentum for himself. He has been a fixture in our first two crews and has become a driver in the program 
leading both the first and second boats from the stroke seat this spring. He too has enjoyed personal best performances in training and adds depth and substance to the culture of our team. Congratulations on your outstanding year, Sam. The Chip Hart Award is an award we give annually to the oarsmen whose determination and commitment throughout the season has been inspirational to Hobart Rowing. Senior Davis Muller is this year's winner of the Hart Award. Davis makes everything more fun. In a sport where personal suffering is the norm, his smile, joy for life, and his ability to make everyone else enjoy where they are makes him a special teammate. While his most obvious contributions to the team are rooted in fun, he is a seriously competitive and capable athlete. His impact on the performance of the team is highlighted by the following. He is a five-time Liberty League champion. He is an 18-time member of the Boat of the Week. He is a Henley Royal Regatta competitor. He is a head of the Charles Champion. He is an ECAC champion and multiple medalists. His impact on us will be forever valued and appreciated. For his passion, commitment, and enthusiasm for Hobart Rowing, I'm pleased to award Davis with the Hart Award. Our final award tonight is in honor of our founder, Ford Weisskittel. Our MVP, great teams are built upon the character and performance of great people. Senior Brett Lahan started his career as an elite performer, garnering the Abe Solomon Award, and he will depart this program with his legacy as a program builder and an elite performer intact as this year's Weiss Kettle MVP. Brett has driven our culture of training while also constantly attending to the well-being and readiness of our entire squad. He is a leader who is vigilant, fair, and always conducts himself with integrity. We have been lucky to have Brett lead our team in numerous ways these last four years, and his career accomplishments are highlighted as a five-time Liberty League champion, 17 times named to the Liberty League Boat of the Week, Henley Royal Regatta quarterfinalist, program best performance, head of the Charles Champion, and an ECAC champion and multiple medalist. Brett's been at the center of four years of history in this program, making performances that we are grateful for, and we will hope that and proud that you are a statesman today and forever. Thank you, Brett. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Ben, and best wishes the rest of the season. We continue on with the uh, spring season and move to sailing, and Head Coach Scotty Clay will be coming forward, and I would invite these members of the sailing team to join him up here. Charles Miller, Adam Schaefer, Noah Barangas, and Greiner Hobbs. Coach E. Clay, on his way. And. Um, I do want to welcome Provost and Dean of the Faculty to T.T. Ufamato. I'm sorry I missed you earlier on, so thank you for joining us tonight, T.T. All right, Coach. Like our, file, like our fellow teammates, lacrosse players, rowers, we're still in the heat of battle, the competition for the spring season. And we also start um, competition this weekend in our conference championship at SUNY Maritime. We're looking forward to that and hopefully bringing back some good news in terms of being able to represent the colleges at Sailing Nationals in San Diego. This past weekend, the William Smith Herons were, did qualify for the national championship, so we'd like to have both the co-ed team and women's out there next at the end of May for the championships. Tonight's Sailing Award recognizes four athletes for the commitment to their, their own pursuit of excellence. Given an opportunity to contribute to the overall performance of the sailing team, 
These athletes rose to the challenges presented to them. They had the drive to achieve, lead, and excel. First year, Charlie Miller has been selected as Rookie of the Year with a number of impressive performances at regattas during this year. He earned a starting position, and we look forward to see what he will do in the next couple of years. Charlie. Classes of 1994 award, the Team Spirit Award, goes to junior Adam Schaefer for a second year in a row. It would be easy to label him as a role player, but I, prefer, I would prefer to label him as a role model <clears throat> because of his commitment to both academics and athletics and his commitment to his team. He has been selected by his teammates as the Class of 94 award winner. The next award, the Stork Family Sailing Award for the Most Improved Sailor, goes to Noah's Bar Noah Barangas. He had the drive and hunger to become a better athlete. Noah worked hard every day at practice on the water and in the gym to improve his skills and ability, which were noticed by everyone on the team. Thank you, Noah. Before the uh, presentation of the next sailing award, I'd like to ask Mr. John Moore, Brian Clancy, and assistant rowing or sailing coach Dan Thompson to join Coach E. Clay on the stage for the presentation of the Trevor Moore Award. Tonight, it is my honor to present the next award in memory of Trevor Moore, Hobart Class of 2007. It is a pleasure to welcome to the stage Trevor's father, John Moore, his teammate and best friend, Brian Clancy, who he met in kindergarten, and his best <coughs> and teammate and current Hobart assistant coach, Dan Thompson. This past June, Trevor was lost at sea off of Key Biscayne. Trevor was an accomplished waterman, and his loss was a hit to the entire sailing community and it was very and it was very hard as well on our Hobart program. Trevor was a true statement statesman. In his senior year he was selected Hobart Babe Krause recipient. He was also named the ICSA College Sailor of the Year. He was a three-time All-American. He led his team to two national championships. He was a member of the 2012 US Olympic team and competed in the London Games. Those alone are great athletic accomplishments, but perhaps he will be best remembered by his teammates for his ability to inspire the entire team. As Brian Clancy reminded me today, what made Trevor special was his commitment to his teammates. Trevor understood the experience was far greater than the results. I quote Brian, we would talk a lot throughout the season about the importance of our team members, our friendships, and our respect for each other. I'm reminded every day about how precious and meaningful those relationships are. At some point, you become more than a name on a roster. You become a teammate for life. I ask you a favor tonight in Trevor's honor. Look to your right. Look to your left. Look across the table. Those are your teammates. Think about what you can say tonight or do tomorrow at practice to let them know you care. Trevor understood that a team is only as strong as its weakest link and it's everybody's responsibility to help each other get stronger. You will, be, you will not become a better athlete until the level of play around you gets better. You want to improve, you want to be the best, encourage others to be at their best. Help them and always say thanks. Be valued by your teammates. You will be surprised what you can accomplish together. It is an honor tonight to present the Trevor Oakley Memorial, Trevor Oakley Moore 07 Memorial Award, 
which will be presented annually to the member of the Hobart Sailing Team whose performance has been most valuable to the team and whose dedication and commitment to, to his teammates has been inspirational. The award recognizes the outstanding athletic abilities of Trevor Moore, the 2007 Hobart Athletics Babe Krause Award recipient, a two-time ICSA national champion, three-time All-American, College Sailor of the Year, and Olympian. This award is made possible through the generosity of the SAA. This year's Trevor Oakley Moore 07 Memorial Award is presented to Griner Hobbs. Congratulations, fellas, and thank you again, Mr. Moore and Coach Clancy, for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, we'll wrap up the uh, spring season with the tennis awards, and uh, if Michael Rusk, Danny Cott, Patrick Dunk, Jonah Salida, and Jonathan Atwater would join Coach Risky on the stage, please. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Hanna. I'd like to thank my assistant coach, Dave Dewey, for his help with the tennis team this season. Thanks, Dave. I'd also like to thank Dave Gibbons for representing the team on the SAA Board of Directors. Dave's a great guy, shows up for our fall tennis clinics, comes out and watches matches. Uh, we're lucky to have him representing us. First up is the Rookie Award. This year we have co-recipients, Jonah Salida, and Jonathan Atwater. Both bring a lot of heart and passion for the game to the team. They have played at the top of the ladder in both singles and doubles and have been successful. John and Jonah both combined for eight Liberty League Rookie of the Week awards this season and I look forward to watching them continue to grow and develop as tennis players and people. Pat Dunk was elected a team captain this season as a junior. He has improved as both a player and a leader all season. His consistent approach to on and off court training has served as a positive example for this young team. His loyalty to the team over himself is a big reason why he continues to grow as a tennis player and person. He is this year's recipient of the Most Improved Player Award. Danny Cott's response to not being elected a captain this season was simple. Lead as though he were a captain. His approach to the team and his own improvement is consistent. Danny is a selfless guy to coach. I know he wants what is best for the team. That is a quality that I don't take for granted and serves as a good measuring stick for the rest of his teammates. Danny is the deserving recipient of this year's William A. Wally Tennis Award. Danny. <laughs> Michael Rusk has been a consistent performer for the team over the last few years. This year, he str struggled a bit to find his game after studying abroad this past fall semester. Even through his struggles, Mike is never out of a match. He is a gamer who finds ways to win. His teammates can always count on his very best effort, and that is why he is this year's recipient of the Myron V. Jacobs Award. Yeah, 
Thank you. Congratulations, Sobar Tennis. Good luck this weekend. And now we move to the fall sports, and we'll start off with cross country. And as Coach Fleury makes his way forward, I would invite Tyler Sutherland, Alexander Shaw, Andrew Kane, and Franklin Newman to join us on the stage. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'll give you a little summary of our season and then go to the awards. We had a sort of a rough start with sicknesses and, and uh, Ill, or injuries to start the season out. And when you're running, injuries certainly don't help much. Um, we finished in great fashion, certainly our la last three meets of the year, the Liberty League Championships, the ECAC and the NCAA were our best meets of the season, so we came back strong at the end. Uh, in January, we had the announcement from the NCAA Coaches Division III Association that uh, our team received the NCAA Division III All-Academic Award, uh, one of 13 teams from the Atlantic region, and there's about 70 teams in the Atlantic region. You had to have a 3.1, we had a 3.289, so uh, that was a, a great thing to happen at the end of our season. Uh, our first award will be the Rookie of the Year. Uh, and this is given to a first year who improved certainly all season long. Uh, yeah, he. He ran well for us at the end of the season. I had two freshmen that run him very well. Uh, but he consistently was there when we needed him. This year's uh, Liberty, or excuse me, uh, Rookie of the Year is Frank Newman, our California guy. The second award is our is, is the uh, John L. Brown Award, which is generally given for the most improved. Uh, unfortunately, Ryan, who's not here, he's in London now and, and studying, will certainly be back this fall to you know, lead the team. But Ryan improved all season long. He, he just got back to where he wanted to be. And certainly, I look for great things from him this next fall. It's Ryan M Moore. <clears throat> the third award, the Gus Hillman Award, is to a teammate with outstanding determination, sportsmanship, leadership, uh, just doing great things for the, the team and himself. Uh, I knew during vacation this summer, he's a freshman, and he sent me a note and said, geez, coach, things are going well. Everything's great, but those eight-mile tempo runs are a little tough. I immediately sent him a note back and said eight minutes, which is a huge difference. But he says, oh, that makes more sense. So uh, he survived that and had a great year. Our, Rook, our Gus Hillman is... Alex Shaw. <clears throat> uh, the Ron Fleury Award, uh, endowed by one of my former runners that was a captain back in the 80s and doing great now with his running as he turns 50, uh, Tom Patchett. Uh, this year's 
award is to a letter winner, a four-year letter winner, who never ran cross country in high school. He came to us, contacted me about running cross country, he has been a great guy, determined student leader for four years. He was our co-captain this year, certainly you know, led with great distinction. This year's Ron Fleury Award winner is Andrew Kane. The Charles P. McCoy Award is given to the most valuable runner, uh, and certainly Tyler was our lead runner in every race this year, the last four races of last year, and certainly you know had a, you know, a strong season and stayed healthy, you know this year. Uh, certainly, he has a, a potentially great future. Uh, this year's Charles P. C McCoy Award is Tyler Sullivan. Continuing with the fall sports, Coach Mike Craig will present the football awards. And I invite these members of the team to join me. Tucker Gumkowski, Zach Withers, Marcus Jemison, Connor Hardigan, Nick Laverio, Jacob Stanley, Rio Schmidt, Brandon Shedd, Trayvon Tony, and Tenard Barfield. Coach Craig. Thank you. I'd uh, first like to thank our, our football staff, Aaron Backus, Corey David, Mark Tabscott, Ryan Ballard, Pat Laverio, Jack Daniels, John Drock, Mike Green, John Fasano, Kelvin Cruz, Buck Drock, and John Manley. A special thank you to Reverend Charles for doing chapel for us for all the home games. A special thank you to John Collins for painting and lettering all of our game balls, to Hannah Dickinson and to Dave Mapstone for the faculty athletic fellows. Some of the highlights from the season, uh, I thought the team showed great character, especially the way we ended our season. The senior class tied the record for most wins in Hobart history. Our defense was ranked seventh in the nation and our quarterback Shane Sweeney threw 14 touchdown passes in his last three games. Our first award is the Rookie of the Year. This man led our team in rushing touchdowns. He's a great athlete out of the backfield, tremendous help on the special teams in the return game, a three times Rookie of the Week, and honorable mention all league, Tenard Barfield. The next award is the Tryon Award for Outstanding Lineman. This young man was a captain, first team All Liberty League, a four year letterman, a three year starter, and in spring football this year, uh, he got up at 4 30 or 5 o'clock in the morning all through spring ball and helped us coach the defensive line. Tucker Gumkowski. The Shirley Zarno Memorial Award for Most Improved Player. As a freshman, he was on our scout team. As a sophomore year, he was a starting tight end. He was second team, all Liberty League, all academic for Liberty League, Zach Withers.
the Michael Roberti Memorial Award for his character, sportsmanship, and positive influence on his fellow players. He is a junior, a three-year starter. As a freshman, he was Rookie of the Year in the Liberty League. He was all Liberty League three years in a row. He was two years all East and a preseason All-American, Marcus Jemison. The Michael Silver Memorial Award, whose sportsmanship and perseverance have proved superior. He was two-time All-Liberty League, two-time All-Liberty League academic. He led our team in rushing for the past two years. He's a captain, tore his ACL twice, fought hard to come back and proved to be a great leader, Connor Hardigan. The Harder Family Award, whose love of the game and desire to win is outstanding. We have co-winners. The first, he is a key contributor on special teams. He's both a long and a short snapper, all academic Liberty League for three years, a three-year letter winner, and a great leader, Nick Laverio. The other person was a three-year letter winner, a two-year starter, captain, all Liberty League, all East, and had a career-ending injury when he tore his ACL in the fourth game, Jacob Stanley. The Robert Cullen Memorial Award to Special Teams Player of the Year. Second team all Liberty League, averaged 36 yards per punt with a long of 60 yards, seven punts inside the 20, and he happens to be one of the nicest, most polite people I've ever met in my life, Rio Schmidt. The Bill Middleton Memorial Award, the Offensive MVP, a sophomore, two-year letter winner, second team All-Liberty League, first on the team in receiving yards, most receiving touchdowns on the team, and one of the most dynamic Divi Division Three receivers in the country, Brandon Shedd. The Bob Toner Award for the Defensive MVP, a captain, a three-year starter, all Liberty League, first team, three years in a row. He led our team in tackles the last two years, had 270 career tackles, 15 and a half sacks, and if you ever saw us, you would know he plays with a little bit of an edge, Trayvon Tony. Thank you. Terrific. Sean Griffin, head soccer coach, is on deck. <laughs> Starting second baseman for the Boston Red Sox, Sean Griffin. Okay, these, uh, 
Members of the team, please join us. Tyler Serafin, Kyle Harrod, Tyler Niles, and Derek Achimpong. Hobart Soccer. Thank you, Mike. I'd like to first start with uh, thanking Dale Jordan, my assistant coach, uh, who just does an amazing job, goes above the call of duty, and uh, we're so fortunate to have him here. I would also like to thank James Hall, who is a student assistant, uh, who has a, a fantastic future in, in, in coaching soccer. And also, I would like to thank Aaron Pelkey, our faculty fellow. Uh, Professor Pelkey goes above the call of duty. He drove our vans to Colgate University yesterday. He's traveled to Brazil with us, and he's often seen running around St. Clair Field uh, getting ready to give our guys a pep talk about the importance of the classroom. So thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Just some highlights from the past season. We had a, a very good season in my mind. We finished 13-3-2. and two. Um, That was our 10th consecutive winning season. We advanced to the Liberty League semifinals for the second consecutive year. We're ranked as high as 10th in the country. And we received our 8th consecutive National Soccer Coaches Association of America Team Academic Award, uh, which requires a 3.0 team GPA. And lastly, we had the 12th lowest goals against average in the country out of 411 programs. Uh, the Rookie Award recipient this year is Derek Ashimpong. Derek was named to the NSCA All-Region Team. He was named an All-Liberty League Second Team Selection. He shared the Liberty League with four game-winning goals and led our team in scoring this year with eight goals, one assist, for a total of 17 points. I'm excited about the future uh, for Derek and his teammates. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Ashumpong. The Ray DeMuth Award this year recipient is Tyler Serafine. Tyler was an All-Liberty League second team selection this past fall in addition to his captain's duties. He earned eight shutouts and ended the season with a 0.60 goals against average. His career goals against average of 0.64 is the best in Hobart soccer history for goalkeepers. Tyler's work ethic and leadership were second to none. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Serafine. has the finest shoes on. I, I, I often comment about that. Nice wingtips. Very nice. The Jeffrey S. Persily Class of 75 Award recipient this year is Tyler Niles. That's not the real story here, though. During the summer of his junior year, Tyler suffered a lacerated liver while playing in a PDL game, causing him to miss the entire season during his junior year. To top things off, this past fall, Tyler suffered a broken tibia and fibula two days before our Liberty League semifinal against Kit Skidmore College, ending his playing career as a Hobart College soccer player. One can only imagine what it felt like for Tyler during those difficult moments as a student athlete. The Persily Award symbolizes determination, hard work, and inspiration. And for this reason, there is no better recipient than Tyler Niles for this year's Jeffrey S. Persily Class of 75 Award. <laughs> the Stephen R. Murphy Class of 77 Most Valuable Player Award recipient this year is Kyle Herod. Kyle was named to both the NSCA All-Region First Team and the ECAC Upstate All-Star Team. He was an All-Liberty League First Team selection and finishes his career as a two-time Hobart Soccer Most Valuable MVP winner and three-year captain. He was a tremendous leader both on and off the field for us during his entire career. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Herod. It was an awkward mo dance moment right there. Thank you very much.
Congratulations, men. And on to the winter sports. And Coach Sweeney will tip it off. And if these student athletes would join us, Jamal Lucas, Tommy Campion, Luke Ruddy, and Colin Doherty. I'd like to start by acknowledging my wife, Lisa Sweeney, and my great staff, Mark Linebaugh, Dennis Pisnack, Trey Blanding, for their tireless work. The 2015-16 season did not lack for excitement. There were close losses to good teams. Division II, Robert Wesleyan College, by one here at Bristol, went on to win the Wendy's Classic. Also, a tough loss to league champ Skidmore by three. We also had signature wins. A decisive victory at top 25, an NCAA tournament team, Scranton, as well as a great home win against Rochester. Consistency, though, proved elusive. With no returning starters, this year's group was faced with many challenges. Through our struggles, we saw growth, and at times, glimpses of how great we could be. We have challenged our players to act on the lessons learned and to work each day to improve. It is an honor to coach this group of young men. On to our awards. The Kent Butler Class of 54 Memorial Award is for our most improved player. This year's winner followed up a successful rookie campaign with a season that saw him start in all 25 contests. With 10 pounds of added muscle, this young man made contributions where they were needed, fighting for loose balls, battling for rebounds, and sinking timely shots. He has earned the respect of teammates and coaches alike for his improvement and perseverance. This year's Kent Butler Memorial Award goes to Luke Ruddy. The Statesman Award. This year's recipient truly represents the qualities associated with the award. Scholarship, leadership, and teamwork. This young man boasts a 3.66 GPA and also serves his fellow classmates as a study mentor. He was challenged to improve his game in all aspects, and he has fought hard to do so. Most important, he has displayed and consistently displayed a work ethic that sets a great example for his teammates. This year's Statesman Award winner is Tommy Campion. Bob Ford Class of 54 MVP Award. This year's recipient led our team in points, 16.7, rebounds, 6.4, steals, and blocks. He was named by the ECAC and the USBWA of Rochester as their respective Rookies of the Year. He was named Liberty League Honorable Mention and also to the All-Rookie Team. This young man plays with a fire, and we've challenged him to continue to grow, most importantly as a leader. This year's Bob Ford MVP is Jamal Lucas. Our Rookie Award. This year's winner was our second leading scorer, averaging 12.5 points per game, as well as finishing in the top 20 of our conference in steals and assists. He was named to the Liberty League All-Rookie Team. This young man is a committed worker, and we have challenged him to become an even better leader moving forward. 
The recipient of the Rookie Award, Colin Doherty. Congratulations, gentlemen. Coach Neer, always good to have you in Bristol Gym. Connie, welcome. Good to have you all here. And on to hockey. Coach Taylor will make his way forward, and I would invite these members of the ECAC West Championship team to join Coach Taylor. Mac Olson, Brad Robbins, Ben Gamash, Tanner Shaw, and Jack McNee. Hobart Hockey. Coach Taylor. Thanks, Mike. They're faster on the ice. I first would like to thank the Holden family, Holden family the Kendall family, and Boswell families for endowing the Hockey Awards in the SAA, the colleges, and the hockey alumni for their passionate support. I also want to recognize at this time my assistant coach, Mark Phelan, his spirit for the team and desire to impact the program was immediately felt by everyone. His loyalty and selflessness to do his part or any part asked of him for the players of the program was unwavering. I would also like to thank hockey's faculty athletic fellow, Professor John Hoffman, for his constant support of the program. To all my players that wear the, our colors with pride and respect, appreciation, I thank you. Your efforts, sacrifices, successes have made those before you, those that support you, very proud. You once again have had special moments and accomplishments. The winning this team to date, a league championship, a return to the NCAA tournament, will be marked in the history of the program forever, and it is yours. You are a special group, and it was a pleasure and honor to have coached you all. Now for this year's Hockey Award winners. This year's, we had Co-Rookie co of the Year Award winners. Both of them were defensemen. One was an all-league rookie team selection. The other played a key role in a defense that set a goals against average program record. One was a top rookie scorer and second on the team in points by a defenseman. The other one was a top defensive defenseman and second on the team in block shots. One an impact on our power play, the other an impact on our penalty kill that was ranked third in the nation. Both 3.5 and better GPAs that get it done off the ice and on the ice and have earned the respect of their teammates and coaches. Congratulations, first years, Tanner Shaw and Jack McNee. This year's D. Michael Hazelton 85 Memorial Award for Most Improved Player goes to an individual statistically. He doubled his points to lead the team in scoring. From a good player to an all-league all player to an All-American. From an ingredient player known for his offense to a complete player recognized for his defensive plays throughout the season. From a compliment player to an assistant captain of a championship team. Our most improved player, who was one of our most valuable players. Key improvement as a player, as a competitor, as a teammate, was a vital part of this team's success. Congratulations, Senior Assistant Captain Brad Robbins. Not done with him yet. Next, this year's Boswell Award recipients also are co for our MVP, our co-winners. Both All-Americans and both All-League selections. Both critical pieces to our special teams, one a threat on our power play, one a threat on our penalty kill. Both senior forwards who produced as line mates and also produced when they weren't. 
One a captain, the other assistant captain. One led the team in scoring, one led the team. Obvious, obli obviously, from their teammates' votes, and it would be best for me to just quote one of them, both of these players deserve this, and if it was up to me, I would give it to both of them. So I have done that. Congratulations, seniors, Mac Olson and Brad Robbins. Our last award, this year's Hockey Holden Award winner. It's a fitting award if it's one of our models this year of talent is never enough. It's an award about character. Certainly from the statistics, an impact player from his freshman year through his senior year. However, more importantly, he enhanced the program with his high character and high conduct. An example, example of high academic achievement and serious career pursuit. He is and he represents what you want from someone termed a front porch guy of the program. A captain this year, an assistant last, no coincidence, both years resulted in league championships. In line with this award, his sportsmanship, character, leadership, and performance on and off the field, on and off the ice, for all four years, definitely had a significant impact on the program. Congratulations. Senior Captain Ben Gamash. Thank you very much. Each time a, one of our teams wins a conference championship, the Statesman Athletic Association purchases team plaques for uh, the members of the team. The Hobart hockey team receive these, and the rowing team will receive them as well and, and hopefully some other teams before the spring season's over. So Coach Taylor, again, congratulations on an outstanding season. Members of the hockey team, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll wrap up the winter season with the squash awards and Tim Risky will present those and I invite Danny Cabrera, Terrence Rose, Jack Shannon and Joshua Oakley to join Coach Risky on the stage. Hobart Squash. Hello again. Thanks to our faculty athletic fellow, Scott McKinney, for your support. Uh, Josh Oakley was the team's number one player this past squash season. He's an All Liberty League selection and recipient of the college squash Player of the Week National Award. Josh was also selected as a Liberty League Rookie of the Week and Liberty League Performer of the Week. Through his focused practice, I'm sorry, through his focused effort in practice and gritty determination in matches, his impact went well beyond wins and losses. His best years as a statesman are still ahead of him. Josh is this year's recipient of the Squash Team Rookie Award. Terrence Rose had a case of the yips his first year with the team last season. This year he emerged as a reliable and confident player on the court. His work ethic and drive to succeed were two key ingredients to his improvement this season. His confidence on court improved, but he also improved as a leader, making him, a, making him an easy selection for this season's Most Improved Player Award. Well, Jack Shannon was selected as a sophomore captain this season. He is reliable, hardworking, and leads by example. He stepped into a leadership role and did what he could to help shape the team that he wants to be a part of. He also upped his level and became determined to win every match he played this year. Jack is this year's recipient of the R. Chapin Siebert Memorial Squash Award. Jack. 
Senior Captain Danny Cabrera has seen the Hobart squash team grow over the course of his four years. When I think of Danny, I think about his consistency as a teammate and friend, loyalty to the team in good times and bad, and willingness to help others on and off the court. Danny is a two-time Liberty League All-Academic Honor recipient, a fantastic squash player, student, and friend. Danny is this year's recipient of the Dr. Frank P. Smith Squash Award. Congrats, Danny. I miss it. Thank you. Our Director of Athletic Communications, Ken DeBolt, will now present the uh, Abe Solomon Memorial Award. Ken? This is the 18th time I've had the pleasure of presenting the Abe Solomon Memorial Award, uh, which recognizes Hobart Athletics Rookie of the Year. The 20 men who've come forward to accept the award, uh, and as a, a stats person, I, I feel the need to point out that the math doesn't add up there, 18 times 20 recipients. Uh, we've had three co-winners. Um, those 20 men have come forward and all had one thing in common. They were all the recipient of their team's Rookie Award. That streak ends tonight. This man mauled opponents, scoring at an unprecedented rate for a statesman rookie. He came up three points shy of the school's rookie scoring record, despite playing three fewer games than the record holder. His debut season was so exceptional, he was named the team's MVP this evening. This year's winner of the 2016 Solomon Award is Jamal Lucas of the basketball team. Congratulations, Jamal. <clears throat> the Arnold Statesman Scholar Athletes Awards are next. Uh, I'll ask Coach Mike Green to come forward and assist with those. And they will be presented by Hobart College Dean Eugen Baer. So Dean Baer, if you would come forward. And uh, I would like to have these seven sophomores join Ken DeBolt over here to my right, not on the stage, but on the floor. Uh, Luke Ruddy, Alex Helm, Bennett Moore, Frank Opplinger, Joe Escamilla, Harry Nichols, and Harrison Luce. And also, these juniors, please. Tommy Campion, Zach Gratton, Sean Cunningham, Carl Belisario, Michael Russo, Griffin Marsh, and Austin Latorney. If you would come forward, please. The Arnold Statesman Scholar Athlete Award, the vision of my classmate and dear friend Bob Arnold, this next award salutes the true spirit of the Statesman student athlete and recognizes high academic achievement along with community spirit and loyal to one's teammates, loyalty to one's teammates. As much to honor sophomores and juniors for their scholarly dedication, this recognition is also intended 
to serve as an incentive to all of our athletes to strive intellectually. This select group of seven sophomores and seven juniors have garnered academic honors here at Hobart College in the respective athletic leagues and some of them at the national level. Their grade point averages range from 3.5 to 4.2. And as a group, the 2016 Arnold Scholars we are about to salute share an average GPA of 3.8. It's worth it, yep. The sophomore Arnold Scholar Athlete Award winners are Luke Ruddy, basketball. Alex Helm, football. Bennett Moore, lacrosse. Frank Oppinger, ice hockey. Joe Escamilla, soccer. Harry Nichols, tennis. And Harrison Luce, rowing. The junior Arnold recipients are Tommy Campion, basketball. Zach Gratton, basketball. Sean Cunningham, football and lacrosse. Carl Belisario, ice hockey. Michael Russo, ice hockey. Griffin Marsh, rowing. And Austin Letourney, rowing. So Dean Bear, if you join the award recipients for a photo over there, please. Congratulations, gentlemen, and uh, well deserved. I now invite these four seniors to join me on the stage, please. Jacob Stanley, August Weary, Tyler Serafin, and Parker Thielander. The next two awards are presented only periodically when the Hobart Athletic Staff Council, the SAA Board, and the Maxwell Awards Committee determine there are deserving recipients. Tonight we have highly commendable co-recipients for the Coach Bill Maxwell Memorial Award and the William J. Napier Memorial Award. The description of the Napier Award appears on page nine and the Coach Maxwell Award on page 14 of your dinner program. Bill Napier suffered a fatal heart attack in April of 1983. Just seven months later, then head football coach Bill Maxwell was diagnosed with brain cancer. Both of these gentlemen were in their 50s. In their relatively short lives, the impact these two gentlemen had on Hobart College, Hobart Athletics, and their respective communities is beyond remarkable. Both Bill Napier and Coach Maxwell were men of deep faith, earnest concern for others, and a healthy, healthy measure of humility, the consummate statesman for sure. Past recipients, of the Coach Maxwell Memorial Award include fans, team managers, alumni, herons, and Hobart student athletes. 
Then football and lacrosse standout Scott Yoder, class of 2001, and now the head football coach at Shenandoah University, was the initial recipient of the Coach Maxwell Award. Many of you will recall that Dr. Bob Ford received this honor at last year's Block H dinner. And Bob, it's very special to have you here with us tonight. Where's Dr. Ford? Dr. Ford, great comeback. Jacob Stanley of the Hobart football team and August Weary of our rowing team fit this award's purpose perfectly and are exactly the types of young men Bill Maxwell would have loved to coach. What each of these athletes has meant to his respective team, only their teammates and coaches can fully appreciate. And as citizens, teammates, and leaders, Jake Stanley and August Weary are indeed the very good fortune of Hobart athletics in our community. First, please join me in congratulating senior Jacob Stanley as a Coach Maxwell Memorial Award winner. Jacob. And let's give a warm congratulations to August Weary as well. August. Founded in 1970 by then Athletic Director Bill Stiles and a loyal band of Hobart alums, the SAA has been supporting Hobart's teams and the college's wellness and recreation programs in rising fashion for nearly six decades. In 1973, and periodically since then, the SAA has honored individuals and teams for outstanding service to Hobart Athletics and to the SAA. The first recipient of this award was none other than Robert A. Bristol. Last year, Hobart basketball captain and now assistant coach Trey Blanding was honored with the Napier Award. These two seniors to my right have been outstanding ambassadors for our college, for their respective teams, and for Hobart athletics. Their appreciation of teammates, their unselfish approach to their respective roles on their teams, and the class with which they represent the Hobart statesmen makes each of them very deserving of the Napier Memorial Award. Indeed, their service to Hobart Athletics and to the SAA has been outstanding. The first recipient of the 2016 Bill Napier Memorial Award is senior soccer goalkeeper, Tyler Serafin. Sharing in this honor, and de deservedly so, for 2016 is senior quarterback and special teams player, Parker Thielander. Parker. Doreen Maxwell Memorial Citizenship Award. This is Doreen on your far right with her son Danny and another volunteer at the center of concern. What Coach Maxwell was to Hobart Athletics, his wife Doreen was to the Geneva community. Distinguished activist and exceptional college quarterback Don McPherson characterized Mrs. Maxwell this way, and I quote, Doreen was a wonderful woman with an amazing heart. She walked with great peace, end quote. The seven words in the top right-hand corner of the college's homepage tell the world what we are about. It's a tight, precise mission statement. The remarks I had prepared for the presentation of the Doreen Maxwell Award to Bud and Diane Ames, heartfelt as they truly were, come nowhere near the meaning of this video clip. Ken? Hi, Mom and Dad. The mission of Hobart and William Smith Colleges is to prepare students to lead lives of consequence. We are so very proud that you have been chosen for this honor. You've always led by example through your community service and often found a way to incorporate us into your volunteer activities. 
Dad, I remember riding with you to your meetings at Hobart and spending your money in the bookstore while I waited for the SAA to conclude its business. And while your volunteer activities were many, you didn't let them take away from our family time, which is why Tanya and I sold raffle tickets at the Cortland Canoe Classic, helped customers choose Christmas trees at the YMCA, marked shoals in the river, and dropped the tablets into the sewer systems. I also remember mom making dinner and then running out to the historical society meetings or to an evening rehearsal at church. Congratulations on being honored as this year's Doreen Maxwell Award recipients. Your continued community service enriches the lives of so many community members, the student body, and alums. It is a wonderful reflection of your commitment to continued education and the experience around Hobart William Smith. Hi, Grandma and Grandpa. I'm happy you worked so hard. I love you. Bye-bye. Congrats, Grandma and Grandpa. I'm sorry we can't be there. I love you. Goodbye. Congratulations, Uncle Ben and Diane, for your award at Hobart. We really miss you, and we hope you have a good time there. Hi, Uncle Ben and Diane. Um, I really congratulate you on um, your award, and I hope you have a great time, and I really miss you. Bye. Hi, Mom and Dad. We wish we could be with you today to celebrate this great honor, but we're thrilled that all your hard work and dedication is being recognized. Congratulations on such a fantastic honor. We love, we love you. you. We're sorry we can't be there to celebrate with you tonight. Enjoy the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in saluting Diane and Bud Ames for their lives of consequence they have chosen to live and in thanking Bud for his outstanding leadership as SAA president. Diane and Bud Ames. Well, thank you, Mike. Yeah. Oh. I, 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 I'm speechless. <laughs> you all know most of my family there. In fact, that's all my family. So. Uh, Wonderful, Ken and uh, Mike, thanks for all that. Uh, that's unbelievable. But I have to remind you, I'm the outgoing president of the SAA. There's the real president down there, Mark. <laughs> and then John Bogle, the incoming SAA president. So again, thank you, Mark, for your support of the Hobart Athletics. And John, I'm sure you'll look, for, I'm, I am sure you will preside as well as I did or better for the SAA, so thank you. I would like to thank all the Statesman Athletic Association members who are here tonight. You make this event possible and are truly the team behind the team here at Hobart. If you are not a member, I encourage you to join. Your continued support will help all of our student athletes. Diane and I thank the Maxwell family for endowing this award in Doreen's memory. We are honored to receive this recognition. But tonight's real honorees are our senior student athletes as they progress, yes, in their lives of consequence. Thank you very much. Amid the uncertainty in today's world, just to wrap this award up, I'm fully certain of one thing, Bud and Diane. Future recipient of Doreen's awards will be truly deserving. But ladies and gentlemen, you have just met the only city clock winder and bell ringer choir director who will ever receive any Hobart Athletics Award. So congratulations. <laughs> And with the Doreen Maxwell Award uh, comes a donation to a charity of the recipient's choice. And as 
Doreen donated a, a good amount of her time to the Center of Concern. She was particularly fond of Operation Merry Christmas. Diane and Bud have earmarked their gift of $1,000 to the Center of Concern for Operation Merry Christmas. So Bud and Diane, thank you very much. We'll get a letter off to them and the check. Well, we move into the final awards tonight. They're on the back page of your program and uh, head coach of hockey, Mark Taylor, will come forward and we've got to move a couple things around and then we'll be ready to go. Coach Taylor. have some fun with you and flip a couple of your pages here. <laughs> I just make it up as I go, Mark. The first award, the Hanno Award for Excellence in Citizenship, Scholarship, and Loyalty. This year's Hanno Award recipient was an immediate impact to the Hobart Hockey Program in the HWS community as a de desired model of our student athletes. He has achieved with high academic accolades as a top student, top athlete, quality citizen. Academically, he's a 3.75 GPA in environmental science minors in sustainable development in sociology. He's been a Dean's List every semester. He just received the George M. Ashman Memorial Prize for character, courtesy, and selflessness. He's a candidate with the Canadian Military Pre-Pilot Program. Athletically, he was the ECAC League Defensive Player of the Year. This achievement was while also being third on our team as one of our top offensive players. A repeat all-league selection every year, an all-league academic team selection. He played in 101 of 106 games in every situation and on all special teams. In the community, his internship with the Ministry of Natural Resources in Canada, consistent volunteer from youth sport clinics, cancer awareness, the Geneva Lunch Program, building a playground into every HWS day of service. One of two students selected as a teacher assistant. Loyal to his responsibility as a role model for today's youth. He brings a refreshing level of appreciation and desire to exhaust his opportunity here at HWS. Add in the fact that he's wavered little on his high road while his family faces challenges back home these past two years. He fully reflects the award traits of exceptional academic achievement, dedication to the community, and trustworthiness as a teammate. Senior Captain Ben Gamash. Congratulations, Ben. Thanks, Coach. I want to first express how humbled and honored I am for receiving this award tonight, especially when I think of how many great athletes in this gym could have easily received it as well. I want to first thank Coach Hannah and Mrs. Hannah for everything they've done and for the last four years for this athletic department. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank the SAA for all the contributions. We all know our success as an athletic department wouldn't be possible without them. Although my family couldn't be here today, I would like to thank them for all the sacrifices they've done throughout the hockey career, for giving me the opportunity for being part of such an amazing school and to be part of a statesman family. I want to give a special thank you to our conditioning coaches as well as our athletic trainers, especially Sarah, for all the hard work and for helping me get back on the ice for the conference finals and the NCAA tournament. 
I definitely wouldn't be able to finish my final season here without you. Lastly, I want to thank the st my teammates and coaches, Mark Taylor and Mark Phelan. This has been one of the greatest years of hockey I've ever been a part of, and it isn't only because of our success, but also because of the memories and brothers I've gained. I couldn't have asked for a better group of guys and team to end my senior year as a statesman, but most importantly, ending my career as a hockey player. Thank you. Congratulations, Ben. That's wonderful. The Bill Stiles Memorial Award will be presented by head coach Greg Raymond. And as Greg comes forward, let me offer a tip of the hat to several key members of the Block H Dinner Committee who made tonight possible. Mark Taylor, Tim Sweeney, Mark Leinbaugh, Mike Green, and Trey Blanding. Coach Raymond, the Bill Stiles Award. The William C. Stiles Memorial Award presented to the senior whose leadership, determination, and character most reflect the traits and value of Bill Stiles. This award recipient, a two-time captain for the Statesman Lacrosse Program, our most accountable as a junior and our only as a senior. In my first month as a head coach, I had meetings with many players. One of my first was with this award recipient. After doing some research and, and finding out some brief history, I'd realized that this recipient's current sophomore grade point average was uh, un underwhelming, we'll say. And we had a very serious talk, and I basically said, you need to commit to this program and commit to this institution or maybe go find a different hobby. And since that meeting, this young man has, to say change would be a drastic understatement. He's, he's grown into an exceptional man. <clears throat> he's put on 15 pounds of athletic weight. He's improved academically, has become one of our best players, one of our hardest workers, and most importantly, the best captain that I've ever coached. From athletic achievements, his, his goals and assists are uh, not overwhelming. They're good. His nine goals, his three assists. Had a three-goal performance for his Cornell. And where he helps us the most is in a very unique statistic. Ground balls for a lacrosse team are as important as any statistic that we have. They provide us possession of the ball. We unfortunately have a sport where the, when the other team scores, we don't get the ball. We have to go earn it again. And this is where Coop is outstanding. Uh, he's our best ground ball player, our best in the possession battle, and he's currently on pace for another 45 to 50 ground ball season. Six ground balls by himself in our Siena contest, six ground balls in our win versus Georgetown. He started every game since his sophomore year, honoring that first wing of that face-off. And if you would ask him, he'd want nothing better than to pick up that ground ball. It's the most important part of the game to him. My favorite statistic, however, that in three seasons, in three years since I've been the head coach here, this young man has missed two practices. One for a job interview, which I had to make him go to, and two for a shoulder injury just this past week. Every practice, every day, even though he is our captain and our leader, he assumes a quiet role of hard work and brings everything he needs to in order to make sure that our team is as motivated as they can be. This young man has the true curse of a leader. He takes responsibility for his actions and he takes responsibility for his teammates' actions. He holds each member of our program accountable for all of their decision-making. 
We have worked tirelessly since we've been here to shift the culture of the Hobart Lacrosse Program and the day-to-day -day pursuit of each of its members. And while we're still working, and we always will be, this young man has been at the forefront of that effort. I'm proud to call him our sole captain. He has earned high recognition for his sacrifices he's made to the Hobart Lacrosse Program. This year's recipient of the William C. Stiles Memorial Award is Cooper Stefaniak. Um, so, Coach Raymond let me know that I was going to give a speech tonight, so this has come from the cuff, which I might be best. Um, Hobart Lacrosse means a lot to me, and uh, the guys on the team and this coaching staff has really influenced me for the past three years, and I've been able to grow as a player. And uh, from Coach Hanna, the SAA, the SAA, I really appreciate all that you do for us. Thank you. Congratulations, Cooper. Thanks, Greg. Before the Krauss Award is presented, I'd like to acknowledge the, re the remaining members of the Block H Committee who worked so hard on tonight's event. Becky Steedle, Christine Finnerty, Corey David, Mike Craig, Dale Jordan, Ken DeBolt, and Patty Calla. Thank you, one and all. And now, for the Francis L. Babe Krauss Memorial Award to Hobart's Athlete of the Year, Please welcome back head hockey coach, Mark Taylor. Mark. You know, there's, there's not a, a time when you're not around the players that you, uh, they don't improve you. And uh, uh, as Benny said it in, in his speech there, how he's humbled. And uh, every year when we, we go through the selection process for all these awards, it's very, you know, very humbling of the competition for him. And uh, you're on pins and needles hoping it's your guy, uh, but you don't worry because there's so many great guys. And uh, for me to be up here uh, to presenting two of them, I'm very humbled. And certainly uh, it speaks volumes of the quality of athletes that we have in the room. And I wasn't over there in trouble because I was fooling around with a notebook. I had another award to give. So this year's Francis Babe Krause Memorial Award, Award goes to an individual who also was an impact player to Hobart Hockey his entire career. Athletically, he was a finalist for the Division III Player of the Year, a first-team All-American from a league rookie his first year to two consecutive years on the All-League team to Player of the Year this year. An all-academic team member every year has played in 103 of 106 games, only missing any of them to due to injury. All special teams player, captain his senior year, assistant captain his junior year, both resulted in championships. He signed and played professionally already with Evansville of the East Coast Hockey League at the end of the season. Academically, he's a 3.15 GPA economics major, a minors in international relations and sustainable development. He's a member of the Investment and Finance Club. He already has signed a job commitment letter with Arthur Gallagher, executive insurance broker in Chicago, Illinois. He has received individual accolades, but done so while leading the way as the heartbeat of one of the most successful programs in our program's history. A fierce competitor, a big part of the glue of this team, one of the best forwards, and arguably the best career forward in our program history. Senior Captain Mac Olson. First, I'd like to congratulate all the award recipients tonight and their teams on great seasons. I'm very honored to be given such a prestigious award, 
and I want to thank the Krause family for being generous sponsors. Thank you, Coach Hanna, the SAA, and all the alumni for their support over the past four years. We are all fortunate to be collegiate athletes and strong team, and the strong team behind us make us proud to be statesmen. Thank you to my family who have spent endless hours in the car driving up from Detroit to see every single one of my home games over the past four years. I wouldn't be where I am today without their love and support since the first time I set up on skates. And lastly, and most importantly, I'd like to thank the entire Hobart hockey family. Hockey is a game that takes an entire team with a collective vision to accomplish something special. This award isn't just for me individually, it's to credit all my teammates. To my coaches, Mark Taylor and Mark Phelan, we appreciate all the hard work you do on and off the ice to make us an elite program in the country. And to our trainers and strength coaches, especially Sarah, Coach Dorn, and Coach Jake, thanks for always making us ready to play, compete day in and day out on and off the ice. And thanks to our fans. We couldn't do it without your dedication, like people, from, like, people like Roseanne, the Penrod family, Jimmy and Patty Mariano, you always, you'll always be part of our team and part of our major success. And finally, to my 25 brothers and best friends that are here with us today, as well as the long list of teammates I've had here at Hobart. I would not be up here tonight without every single one of you. I am proud of what we were to accomplish together and cannot wait to see what you can accomplish next. Thank you. Matt, congratulations. Uh, just a reminder to the award recipients, on the back of your plaque box or this type of box is an envelope, and in that envelope is background information on the award and the uh, donor's information. So those envelopes are very important award winners. Make sure you grab those off and don't discard them. So, Matt, congratulations again. So before we move into the senior watches and the capstone part of tonight's event, just a, uh, a request. And underclassmen, don't take this the wrong way. We're all under the gun. You guys are under the gun. The only good thing about being my age being your, versus your age is I don't have to take final exams. But last year when we take this quick break to line up the seniors, we lost a lot of underclassmen. And I'm sure you went back to the library. But uh, it's good manners, it's good sportsmanship, and it's the right kind of teamwork to stay right here with these seniors while they're honored. All right? So let's, uh, let's make sure we do that. Uh, the presentation of the Hobart Senior Watch mirrors the traditional handshake that follows most intercollegiate athletic events. And uh, just a reminder to the seniors before you come up, you should have an index card. And on that index card is your name and a number. So when you come up, get yourselves in numerical order. And uh, this is just practice for commencement because you're going to do the same thing on May 15th in this various room. All right, so this is pregame. So, uh, all right, so. Coach Green and Coach Blanding and Christine will be over here to help. Uh, this will only take a minute, so it's a good time to take a, a quick stretch break. And then we'll come back and present the senior watches. Uh, when we do, President Guerin will uh, be at the head of the line, and he'll be joined by SAA board members, head coaches, Jared Whedon and um, Dean Baer for that presentation. So quick stretch break, seniors, up here to my left, please. Thank you. Get yourself in numerical order, and then we'll roll. Okay, I was just checking to make yep. sure that was in your... Uh, yes, move that right up there. Do I have it in the wrong spot? Huh? Do I have it in the wrong spot? No, actually you can throw it up now okay. if you wanted to, and then I'll... Uh,
Okay, folks, if we could, let's uh, move back to our tables and seats and we'll get underway with the Senior Watch presentations. If I could ask the uh, dignitaries to be involved with the senior watches, head coaches, to please join President Guerin up here. Just a note before we begin, uh, many of you are here tonight, or your names are on the screen behind me, and I just want to say thank you very much uh, for your support of the Block H dinner, uh, tonight's Block H patrons. Thank you, Ken. So with this senior watch, the Statesman Athletic Association recognizes these Hobart seniors for their dedication. for their dedication, performance, and sportsmanship. We are honored tonight to have President Mark Guerin at the head of the line presenting the 2016 Statesman Senior Watches. Certainly, if you want to give a little hoot, holler, whistle, applause for these guys, that's great. And uh, seniors, uh, we'll call you by name, and uh, congratulations again, and thank you for all you've done for Hobart Athletics. Emiliano Acosta, football. Alba, New York, environmental studies major with a minor in history. <laughs> Elliot Adler, football. Clinton, New York, political science major, minor in American studies. <laughs> Levi Boyer, football. Waterport, New York, environmental studies major with a minor in anthropology. Josh Britton, football, Carthage, New York, architectural studies major with a minor in art history. Dylan Brody, rowing, Old Greenwich, Connecticut, English major with a minor in media and society. Justin Burke, football, Amherst, New York, American studies major with a minor in history. Danny Cabrera, squash, New York City, dual major in economics and public policy studies. Brendan Casey, football, Boston, Massachusetts, media and society major with a minor in writing and rhetoric. Rachel Catlin, sports medicine, Framingham, Massachusetts. 
somatic health major with a minor in studio art. Lino Comente, hockey, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Economics major with a triple minor in international relations, sustainable community development, and environmental studies. Davis Clark, soccer, Boxford, Mass. Environmental studies major with a minor in economics. Ryan Cochran, lacrosse, Annapolis, Maryland. Media and society major with a minor in history. Not able to be with us tonight is Connor Koff of the football team. Next is Eddie Cox, sailing, White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Political science major with a dual minor in American studies and public policy studies. Also not able to be with us tonight is Justin DiGiulio of the football team. Next is Sky Drazik, rowing, Tampa, Florida. Media Society major, the dual minor in studio art and sociology. Jacob Fox, soccer, Kansas City, Missouri. Public policy studies major with a minor in sociology. Emma Fricke, sports medicine. Hoosick Falls, New York, English major with minor in environmental studies. Zico Gafke, soccer, Haverford, Pennsylvania, economics major with a minor in American studies. Ben Gamash, ice hockey, Long Lock, Ontario, Canada, environmental studies major with a dual minor in sustainable community development and sociology. Tucker Gumkowski, football, Montclair, New Jersey. Psychology major with a minor in education. Harry Hagen, golf, Princeton, New Jersey, an economics major with a minor in international relations. Sam Hallowell, sailing, Middletown, Rhode Island, Sam's an environmental studies major with a minor in history. Adam Hardy, lacrosse, Greensboro, North Carolina, American studies major, minor in history. Connor Hardigan, football, Albany, New York, environmental studies major with a dual minor in sustainable community development and history. Patrick Hathaway, cross country, Brooklyn. Architectural studies major with a minor in art history. Christopher Holloman, football, Ashburn, Virginia. Mathematics major with a dual minor in philosophy and cognition, logic, and language. James Hall, soccer, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Physics major with a dual minor, education in mathematics. Julian Jackson, football, Margate, Florida. Economics major with a minor in media and society. Andrew Kane, cross country, Cheryl, New York, environmental studies major with a minor in English. TJ Kazubski, soccer, Amherst, New York economics major with a minor in environmental studies. Brett Lahan, rowing, also Amherst, New York, economics major with a dual minor in public policy studies and history. Nick Laverio, football, Amsterdam, New York, political science major with a minor in law and society. Gavin Llewellyn, lacrosse, Towson, Maryland, Economics major, minor in international relations. Josh Melanek, golf, Auburn, New York, writing and rhetoric major with a minor in environmental studies. Samuel Menchel, rowing, Farmington, New York, political science major with a dual minor in history 
and international relations. Cooper Merrill, football, North Canton, Ohio, economics major with a minor in environmental studies. Milos Milosolevic, rowing, Belgrade, Serbia, computer science major with a minor in media and society. Davis Muller, rowing, Duxbury, Massachusetts, economics major with dual minor in American studies and history. Tyler Niles, soccer, Narberth, Pennsylvania, architectural studies major with a minor in political science. Mackenzie Olson, ice hockey, Gross Point, Michigan, economics major with a dual minor in international relations and sustainable community development. Christopher Pogey, soccer, Burlington, North Carolina, biochemistry major with a minor in cognition, logic, and language. Jay Puglio, golf, Loudonville, New York, biochemistry major with a minor in environmental studies. Bradley Robbins, ice hockey, Murrieta, California, economics major with a minor in American studies. Jordan Ruth, rowing, Evanston, Illinois, psychology major with a minor in cognition, logic, and language. Amanda Salzman, rowing, Pittsburgh, New York, biology major with a minor in environmental studies. Alexander Sanford, rowing, Chattanooga, Tennessee, dual major in Asian studies and international relations with a minor in history. Ryan Saunders, sports medicine, Warner, New York. I don't think Ryan is with us tonight, so next up is TJ Scamura, football, Williamsville, New York, movement science major with a minor in psychology. Tyler Serafin, soccer, Canandaigua, New York. Public policy studies major with a minor in psychology. Teddy Cisco Tolomeo, lacrosse. Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, American studies major. Jacob Stanley, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. History major with a minor in American studies. Cooper Stefaniak, lacrosse, Lancaster, New York, history major. Tyler Terran, soccer, Scotch Plains, New York. Tyler's a psychology major with a minor in media and society. Parker Thielander, football, Larchmont, New York, writing and rhetoric major with a minor in media and society. Trayvon Tony, football. Huntington Station, New York, architectural studies major with a minor in art history. Christopher Walker Jacks, soccer. Concord, Massachusetts, environmental studies major with a minor in English. Patrick Ware, rowing, Harvard, Mass. Environmental Studies major with a minor in Spanish and Hispanic Studies. August Weary, rowing, Buford, Georgia. Chemistry major with a minor in Hispanic Studies. Kyle Watrowski, soccer, Lancaster, New York. Biology major with a minor in healthcare professions. Christopher Wilson, sailing, Livonia, New York. Dual major in physics, mathematics, with a minor in integrated studies. Sam Zuckerman of the rowing team is at a job interview on the West Coast. So winding up this year's seniors is Yanni Zulia, football, North Tonawanda, New York, biochemistry major with a minor in healthcare profession. Ladies and gentlemen, the great class of 2016.
President Guerin and distinguished gentlemen, thank you for sharing in this. And uh, as the coaches return to their seats, I invite the seniors to please come forward and gather around the podium here. Huh? Yeah. You want to get one of the guys? Hey, Ben. Help Mike. Just move the table around the corner and I'll be out of the way. Thanks. Yeah, Trayvon, why don't you just go all the way down the corner and then we can double up and... Just a, you can wrap around just a little bit. That's good, Trayvon. That's good. Here you go. You guys can squeeze up in there? Yeah, that way. <laughs> okay, seniors. Why don't you swing around here? Yeah, turn around here. Face the old, old coach. All right. So here's the deal. Dean Bear, Wigan's still here. You paying attention? All right, you're in this. I have a, I have a one question quiz for you. All right. There are two possible answers. You get it right, and Dean Bear has assured me you will be exempt from final exams. So if you believe that, I have a bridge to sell you too, Gavin, all right? So here's the quiz though, all right? Ken? What's scarier? Graduated from college and headed to the real world, being 10 years old, moved to a new neighborhood and go to a playground for the very first time. Austin Laterney, what's your answer? Austin, where's Austin? He's a junior. Trayvon Tony, You're, I'm giving you time to study, Austin. Trayvon. <laughs> Emma Fricky, where's Emma? What's your answer? First one, playground? Yeah, all right. Gavin? Playground? All right. All right, here's the, here's the story. There's a columnist that I really enjoy reading. Her name is Anna Suarez. She has a lot of common sense. That's why I enjoy her articles. She recently wrote about the value of recess for elementary school students. Some school administrators seem to think that first graders can sit still for six hours and don't need to go out on the playground. But anyway, in the spirit of me always trying to do my best for you seniors and your teammates. Here are Anna Suarez's 10 playground lessons. So pay attention. And remember, Emilio, the road to the real world passes through the playground. Right? Okay. You ready? Ken? Number one, try new equipment. You might like the slide better than the swings. Number two, not everybody wants to be your friend. That's okay. Number three, don't be shy. Take the first step. Number four, drink lots of water and always have snacks, especially when you go to your job interview. Number five, Wear closed toe shoes. The world will surely step on your toes. Number six, don't wait till the last minute to use the bathroom. Number seven, once in a while it's good to play by yourself. Trayvon, Gamash. <laughs> Number eight, athletes should know this. Skin, knees are part of life. You gotta fall to get up again. 
Number nine, don't make fun of others. Number nine, don't make fun of others. And number 10, sometimes you must hang upside down to see the world right. So congratulations on your achievements, seniors. You've set the bar high for the classes to follow. I thank you for making coming to work day in and day out. So very rewarding for your athletic director and for your coaches. You've made it a lot of fun. And uh, you've done a great job for Hobart Athletics. And uh, I know that everybody here uh, shares in saying a big hearty well done. Well done. Now, seniors, I want you to turn around. I want you to face all these people here who have been packing your parachutes for four years. Some of them have paid for you to go to college. Some of them have coached you. Some have taught you in the classroom. Some have given you hugs after wins, after losses. And I want you to give all those wonderful people a well-deserved round of applause, seniors. Go to it. couple quick announcements. Uh, captains and rising captains, we're going to have a breakfast at 8 o'clock on, on uh, Thursday morning. I'll send you another email. After the dinner tonight, there's a reception for seniors, parents, faculty, and staff, SA members down in the Gilman room, underclassmen, back to the libraries. Ladies and gentlemen, let's conclude this evening with a well-deserved standing ovation for this year's Hobart Statesman teams especially for the class of 2016. Congratulations. Thank you all for attending. You've been a great audience. Safe drive home. Good luck on your exams. Good night.